Friday, July 26th, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. My name is Hunter, and in today's weather forecast, we are going to be talking about a major heat wave building across the central United States that will set up a ring of fire pattern over the northern plains into the upper Midwest, into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, and that could bring back severe weather chances and flash flooding potential. We'll be going over that and a tropical system to watch. We're going to be going over everything that you need to know at the end of this video with the tropics as well and I will be gone likely tomorrow on Saturday July 27th but I will be back in the office on Sunday July 28th to cover the weather forecasts all across southern Canada the United States and the tropics so just know that. What you're looking at right now is the mid-level water vapor imagery, and there's a couple of interesting things that are showing up on here. We got all that moisture pluming up from the southern plains into the southeastern U.S. That's been bringing us the widespread heavy rain and the flash flooding lately from Houston all the way through portions of the Carolinas especially. That is still intact a little bit, but that will be ending over the next couple of days. Notice up here in Canada, into Alberta and Saskatchewan, this curly cue, that is an upper level trough that is actually swinging a very strong cold front through the southern Canadian prairies and the Pacific Northwest, bringing some very nice relief from the heat. And you can see that here on the weather alerts map across the lower 48. Look at the absence of heat alerts across the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Plains considered to what we saw the other day. Um, we still see some heat advisories out there, yes. We still see red flag warnings, yes, because we have major fires raging across California and across parts of the West. And unfortunately, a lot of those really aren't contained because the soil is so dry and it was so hot for so long. So hopefully they can get those fires contained over the next several days. Looking at the upper level pattern across the United States today, there's that ridge stretching from Southern California all the way back up here into the central U.S. and towards the central plains, into the Midwest here today. And here are those high temperatures this afternoon expected from the Dakotas, Minnesota, all the way southward toward Texas here and even parts of the southeast. We're going to be pretty hot this afternoon into the 90s. Even some triple digits cannot be ruled out, especially for South Dakota here. And when you factor in the moisture content in the atmosphere, this is what it will feel like to the body as you walk outdoors. Those heat index values up to 104, 105 degrees Fahrenheit up there into the Fargo and Bismarck region here as we go into the upper Midwest and Northern Plains this afternoon, middle to upper 90 heat index readings across the Central and Southern Plains and more triple digit heat index readings across Southern Georgia, parts of Alabama, South Carolina, and Florida as well. Let's look at the storm reports going back to yesterday on your July 25th time frame. And you can see a lot of that heat did lead to some very strong storms from Montana down here into parts of Idaho, western Wyoming, much of Utah in and around the Salt Lake City area. And then in and around the Phoenix region in southern Arizona, we saw some scattered and sporadic wind reports across the east as well. And looking at the severe storm potential for today, the day one outlook from the Storm Prediction Center has that level one out of five marginal risk of severe weather stretching from northern Minnesota back through the central Dakotas and the panhandle of Nebraska. Another sm small marginal risk over here in eastern Nevada and northwestern Utah and another one down here just east of Phoenix today in southeastern Arizona and far southwestern New Mexico. Looking at that, it's mainly going to be for some wind and hail. The tornado threat, land spout threat is pretty low today. And you can see as we go into the afternoon what the radar depiction will look like. And you can see some scattered storms, summertime storms across the southeast, summertime storms popping up again across the Rockies. Don't be surprised if you see a microburst or two, basically those very strong winds that rush down from the thunderstorm and fan out in all directions. That'll be possible even into the evening hours. And then as, we, as the sun sets and we lose the daytime heating into early Saturday morning, we are going to lose the instability and therefore lose the the coverage and intensity of those storms into early Saturday morning. Here are the rainfall totals going into your Saturday morning. Some heavier rains again across the lower Mississippi Delta region all the way over here into Florida and the coastal Carolinas especially from Charleston up through Myrtle Beach there. 
and into the outer banks of the eastern North Carolina, like Wilmington, those areas could be seeing one to three inches of rain just over the next 24 hours, and that could lead to some flash flooding. So the Weather Prediction Center has a slight risk of flash flooding over here into the eastern Carolinas, and slight risk over here from Houston, stretching through much of Lake Charles, Shreveport, Monroe, and over in there and towards portions of Gulfport, Mississippi, for example, as we do have the potential for flash flooding there. Going into the weekend on Saturday, July 27th, this is for tomorrow with a ridge out east and then we have another ridge building from Mexico towards the north here uh, north of the Rio Grande Valley that will really start to build towards portions of the southern U.S. as we go into the late weekend on Sunday July 28th and looking at those temperatures Saturday afternoon we're right back in the 90s maybe some triple digits out here across the plains same thing as we go into Sunday maybe just a few degrees warmer on Sunday versus on Saturday here especially around Kansas where we could be into the triple digits there with that center of that ridge really starting to set up there in the central U.S., now we do have to watch the jet stream as we go into the weekend. On Saturday, we did mention that upper level trough swinging that strong cold front through the southern Canadian prairies like Alberta, Saskatchewan today. Well, that trough will be on the move east in towards eastern Saskatchewan and Manitoba as we go into Saturday and delivering a glancing blow of some wind shear across the northern U.S. on Saturday and Sunday as it travels east toward Ontario and Quebec, giving us again a glancing blow of some wind shear. And that could lead up to some severe weather as we go into Saturday. There is a level 2 out of 5 slight risk of severe weather from northwestern Minnesota into eastern North Dakota with that marginal extending all the way back through South Dakota and into the panhandle of Nebraska. And you can see during the day on Saturday, mainly isolated scattered coverage of storms but as we get more of that daytime heating later in the day and then especially at night, that mesoscale convective system may be possible there, especially for North Dakota into northwest Minnesota. Those 60-70 mile our wind gusts that you see those quarter size hailstones, maybe even an isolated tornado or two cannot be ruled out there. And then a larger broad brushed area of a marginal risk, level one out of five across the northern U.S. as we go into Sunday for the Dakotas, parts of Minnesota, Iowa, down into northwest Missouri, northeastern Kansas, and eastern Nebraska. This could be upgraded to a slight risk, level two out of five in later outlooks when confidence is higher. But you can see on Sunday, again, same thing like Saturday, during the day, mainly isolated scattered coverage of storms. They will grow as we lose some of that, um, as we get some of that heat later in the day and we start to get more of those storms to bubble up and probably another mesoscale convective system into Sunday night. That pattern will keep happening as we go into next week, but looking at the rainfall totals here for the weekend, you can see the heaviest will be up here into eastern Dakotas and Minnesota where an inch or two, maybe three inches will be possible. Dry out west, dry in the middle of the country, and dry especially up here into the northeast and southeastern Canada for the weekend. Heading into next week, we set up that ring of fire pattern we'll be talking about. That ridge will really start to build north of Mexico into the southern and central U.S., the northern periphery of that ridge will be pretty active. So let's look here at the temperature anomalies next week. And you can see 20 degrees above average here across most of the north central U.S. And folks, we know it's hot in late July and early August, but when we're already seeing uh, anomalies above average of the climatological average here for this time of year, you know it's hot. So you can see as we start next week on Monday afternoon, July 29th, you can see a lot of 90s, triple digits out here from Kansas on south, a lot of triple digits here across the middle of the country on Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon, the middle of next week, and that continues all across the country. Look at the U.S. Even southern Canada gets really hot as we go into later next week on Friday, August the 2nd. So let's look here at our troughs that we'll see evolving on the northern periphery and northeastern periphery of the ridge. This is early next week between Monday, July 29th and Wednesday, July 31st. To end the month, that trough will be coming in. Another one behind the one we're talking about today and tomorrow across the Pacific Northwest that'll be traversing across the middle of the country. But notice a couple things here even by later next week between Wednesday July 31st and August 2nd on Friday Notice the flow is a little bit more cut off here, and the main jet stream is up here into southern Canada. So I think what we're seeing here is a high cape, low shear environment, and that's typically what you see during the summer. You don't see a lot of shear unless you have what you call an MCV, a mesoscale convective vortex that can enhance some of those shear values across this region. So as we go into Monday, you can see more showers and storms across the Mississippi River Valley here, especially the upper and middle Mississippi River Valley. 
Valley, some storms down here in the southeast. That continues into Tuesday. Into Wednesday, we see more storms there. Into Thursday, we see more storms. And Friday as well. So just a, a lot of storms moving over a lot of the same areas there. And there is the potential for some MCSs, those mesoscale convective systems, or even a derecho could develop here in this type of pattern from the upper Midwest down here into the eastern U.S., especially into this orange shade of color that is likely somewhere in this area we're likely to see severe weather between July 29th and August 2nd still not confident enough for a very likely category yet because of those mesoscale features we don't know exactly where they'll track but the overall big picture is there to show that this will be happening somewhere in this orange shade of color but we don't know exactly where this will track okay so looking here at the rainfall totals during the next week time frame this is between Monday July 29th and Friday, August 2nd, notice the rainfall here along the Mississippi River and just to the east there. And in the yellows, oranges, and reds, those are two to plus inches of rain. And then a lot of dry weather across the middle of the country in the plains and then across the west as that ridge really begins to build. Turning our attention to the tropical weather update, some new developments here. The National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, has a low potential, a 20% chance of development over the next seven days. And yes, this is over the next week. So it's going to take time for this to move to the West Northwest, but it is highlighting an area from Cuba all the way back through Haiti, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic here, the Northern Windward Islands and parts of the Bahamas. So we have to keep an eye on this right now. What is keeping this at bay and just ahead of this system is a lot of dry Saharan dust. You can see moving across the greater Antilles today. That'll move across much of the Bahamas, Haiti, and Cuba as we go into the weekend and even early next week you can see the dust starts to thin out here even more later next week so that will give an opportunity for a system to develop as that drier air starts to subside and looking at those sea surface temperature anomalies here they're actually warming up across especially the Caribbean. The Caribbean's always been warm, but it's continuing to warm up now. The northwestern Atlantic and the main development region here still kind of on either side of below normal or above normal, but we're starting to work on those water temperatures. So let's look here at the EPS Ensemble. This is the European Ensemble Guidance for next Thursday. This is August 1st as we turn the page to next month. Remember, I told you it would be through at least August 1st. We won't have a system to watch. And here's August 1st, right at the beginning of the month, we have some something to potentially watch here across portions of the greater and lesser Antilles. And as we go into a week from now, next Friday, August 2nd, that could be moving into uh, the Bahamas, maybe even the greater Antilles like Cuba into Haiti in towards the Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico. Something we have to watch around here. Don't panic. There's nothing to panic about right now. There's still a lot of uncertainty in the track and intensity of this system. It's just a, hey, we need to watch this and we need to watch this closely here. So nothing to panic about. But let's look here at the tropical depression probability here. This is the percentage of that happening through Friday, August 2nd. And notice there's a decent chance, 50 to 60% here across the greater and lesser Antilles and toward the Bahamas, still a pretty medium chance right now. Looking at tropical storm probability, very nebulous. We see this at about 10% at best near the Bahamas. And there's not a chance at a hurricane, at least through Friday. Friday, August 2nd. So we know that between now and Friday, August 2nd, there is likely not going to be a hurricane with this system here as it has a 0% chance of a hurricane. Now down the road beyond August 2nd, there may be something that could be stronger, but we'll have to continue to watch it. Again, don't panic. We'll keep you covered on this channel. Now looking through the long range through the middle of August, going through August 13th, there may be more systems that develop back in the main development region that could move west toward the Caribbean or the tropical Northwest Atlantic. And we'll have to keep an eye on that as we do go through the long range into the middle of the month of August as well. So forecast breakdown for you, major heat wave builds across the central US. Make sure to stay hydrated folks, drink lots of water, make sure to stay air conditioned as well as especially if your job or anything like that ventures you outdoors. Ring of fire pattern setting up next week that could set up some severe weather potential here and flash flooding potential as well across parts of the Northern and Eastern US and that tropical system to watch over the next seven days. That's all we can do is watch. There's nothing on the maps right now that show that thing developing. So, But we will keep you covered on that storm as it does get closer. It will be about a week before we start to see something to talk about. So we'll keep you covered on here. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below. If you did like today's weather forecast, consider giving it a like down below, giving it a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Remember, I will be off tomorrow, but I will be back on Sunday, July 28th for y'all to 
give you all the weather forecasts that you need. So I'll see you later on in the weekend. My name is Hunter with Weather on the Go, and I'll see you all on Sunday.